Yeah. 
Hello, congregation. Welcome once again to another bone snapping edition of the bone or grab your Bible, open up an application, open up a web browser, however you follow along with us here at the Boneyard because we believe in sola scriptura. Now you're saying, Kevin, what does that mean? Well, it is Latin and it means the scriptures and the scriptures alone. We don't be, believe that a prophet gets revelation from God and, and he trumps scripture. We don't believe that the Book of Mormon or, or the Watchtower overrides the, the scriptures. We believe what it says in 2 Timothy 315 that all scripture is good for doctrine teaching and training in righteousness and holiness we believe that the scripture is the highest authority of the believers life so open up your bible follow along with us in scripture if you've been following along with us in our series you know we're knee deep in good rich theology in our series of john so open up your bibles to john chapter 12 let's do a little review jesus has now just entered the holy city at passover the the worshipers are coming from every corner they they've traveled they've ascended to jerusalem and now they hear of Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings, is getting ready to visit the city. They're, they're remembering the prophecies of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, where they're, and they're, they're singing Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. They're reading, they remember what David said in the Psalms, lift up your eyes and your head, O heaven, lift up your gates. Who is this mighty, strong, and powerful God setting his foot upon the earth, reaching towards Jerusalem? They're remembering Remembering the prophecies of a king, a messiah, visiting them. Now, they're grabbing palm branches. They're, they're throwing things down in front of Jesus' feet as he walks in, and as he's ascending towards the heavens, towards Jerusalem. Now, remember what Zechariah verse 9 says, Behold, O Jerusalem, in your hour of visitation, fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. They're sitting there and they're singing praise, Hosanna. They're saying, Hosanna is the Hebrew word and it means send us salvation. Send us salvation. They're singing praises and honor and glory to this Jesus, this young carpenter going up to Jerusalem. Much like the congregation does on Sunday, we sing Hosanna. Praises to the Lord of lords and King of hosts, God of all. Praise his holy name. They sing praises in the face of Jesus. But the same crowd, the same crowd just a few days later as we're in the final week of Jesus' earthly life. This same crowd that sang Hosanna to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in just a few hours and a few days start screaming, crucify him, crucify him, give us Barabbas. The same crowd that's fickle, the same crowd that, that sings praises to his name and just a few hours later offer him up as a sacrifice kill this jesus this messiah i don't know about you but as i read this chapter i see my face in the in the the crowd i see my face in the masses as i sing hosanna one minute then the next minute i sing crucify him i see my face in the crowd as one minute i'm laying palm branches and, and i see my face in the crowd as i'm screaming and yelling with my fist in the air crucify him how easy we are swayed congregation uh, how easy we're moved by the things of this world one minute we're in church worshiping god praising his name then on monday morning we're standing around the water cooler gossiping laughing lavishing up our sins loving our lust worshiping our idols forgetting the master that we served just hours before can you see yourself in the chapters as we read as, don't be on your high horse your holier than thou attitude as you read the scriptures say look at what they did that is so awful how they betrayed our lord jesus how one minute they sang hosanna the next minute they scream crucify him notice as jesus Notice from the, the, the viewpoint of Jesus. Imagine as he's riding up to Jerusalem, he's, he's seeing the, laying the palm branches and worshiping him, saying, Hosanna, as the children dance and sing, glory to God in the highest. He sent our Messiah, our God. The, his, his reputation precedes him. The people are enamored. They're, they're, in, they're, they're engrossed in this young, this 30-year-old carpenter who claimed to be God with no question, and his works proved it. They're enamored, and now Jesus see the children dancing. But Jesus, being fully God and fully man, knew the hearts of men and knew just hours later that they will be dancing upon his, in front of his tomb, laughing, saying, he's dead, he's dead. The one who, who turned the world upside down is God. He's dead, he's, longer, he's no longer here. Jesus knew the heart of men, but still, 
Jesus didn't take the donkey and make him leave Jerusalem. He walked willingly oh, oh, all the way to the road of Golgotha. He, he didn't quake in fear because of the, the fear of death. He trembled under the wrath of God. It was supposed to be us. So before we get ahead of ourselves, open your Bible. Now, let's, let's look at the, the donkey for a second. The donkey that Jesus rode on. I don't know about you, but I can certainly relate to this dumb donkey. The donkey that was tied to a tree. If we read in other Gospels, how he was tied to a tree. Imagine if you could for just a moment, the donkey, he was tied to a tree. He couldn't go backwards. He couldn't go forwards. He couldn't go side to side. He was tied to a tree. Could you relate to that donkey? Now, I'm not saying being a dumb donkey i'm saying are, are, are you tied up in life you can't go to the left or the way right. you, you thought you'll be further along in your life by now you thought you'll have a bigger house or you'll be more settled in your career your 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 love life will be all together you just thought you'll be further along can you put yourself in the place of this donkey this young colt who's put there for a reason we read another the other gospels of matthew and luke how jesus told his disciples what to do concerning this colt hey, we we can relate to this donkey i know i can well, jesus why am i here i can't go backwards why why am i tied to this tree why, why all i can do is circle this tree and the more i circle this tree the tighter i get to it as i, I tangle myself up in it why why am i tied here what, what's the point the point is congregation if you can relate to this donkey if you can relate to this young colt the, the point is that donkey was there tied up for god's glory tied up can't go frontwards backwards you can't be moved to the left or the right or the east or the west you're there for a reason you're tied there for god's glory see jesus in just a few moments is going to use that coat for his glory maybe you're tied up in wherever you are in life you're tied to a tree you you thought your career would be further along your your, your love life you're, you got a divorce you're tied there you're, you 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 got some bitter issues and anger that you never let go you're tied to the tree but it's for god's glory it's for God's glory like this young colt. You're tied there. You don't know where to turn or why you're even there. You, you may even question God. Why am I here? What's the point? But it's for God's glory. For his glory. For his glory. He would get glory in your sickness. How, how would God get glory in my sickness? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told Nebuchadnezzar, we, 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 we will not bow and worship your idol. We will serve the one true God. And even if, even if our God does not deliver us from the fiery furnace, we will not serve you or your gods, but he's fully able if he chooses to do so. So we should look at cancer and say, God is able to heal me. And, and if he doesn't, I shall sing his praises. We must learn to dance like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in the flames. Dance with God through the fire. Dance with God through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. Dance and sing of God's praises as we go up on the rough side of the mountain. Notice this, the rough side of the mountain. It has to be rugged. It has to have rocks. They have to stick out, protrude, and cut us. We have to have some way to go up to each level, somewhere to place our hands, somewhere to put our feet holes in and, and climb up the side of the mountain because if the mountain was smooth we would slide down every time god was is with shadrach meshach and abednego in the, the fiery furnace jesus was using this coat even though he was tied up what what are you going through congregation what an issue do you feel like you're just stuck there you're stuck there but look at it from god's point of view for god's glory my sickness is for God's glory, that I'll suffer well. My loss is for God's glory. No, I'm not telling you that Christianity is all sparkles and rainbows and unicorns. And we all have, have, pass out chocolate bunny rabbits and sing kumbaya. That is not the Christian life. Faith is battered and torn and, and you're, you're broken, but it's an anchor. It keeps you. You may not be happy because happiness depends upon if you have a flat tire, flat tire that day on your car. If, you, if you're sick in body, you're not really happy happy but you can have joy 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 the, the joy of the lord is my strength you can have joy everlasting knowing that you're saved that christ redeemed sinners this colt this donkey wasn't very happy but god uses uses this animal for his glory now a side note that i like to point out there's another donkey in the bible there's another donkey he shows up in the old testament balaam's donkey now 
If you know the story of Balaam, Balaam is a prophet, and God told Balaam not to do something. But Balaam decides in his mind that I'm going to do this thing. He's paying good. He's, I'm going to earn some scratch. I'm going to make it rain. I, I'm going to go find out what, is, what does this really partake of. I'm going to go do this thing. He had a wicked heart and wicked motives. So he saddles up his little donkey, and he starts making his way to a destination that God really doesn't want him to go. And as he goes, the donkey starts walking sideways and starts scrubbing his master Balaam's leg against the walls and starts scrubbing. And Balaam beats the donkey, slaps the donkey, beats and hits the donkey. And God allows the donkey to speak. Yes, it happens in the Bible. God allows the dumb animal to speak. The donkey says to Balaam, why do you beat me? I'm saving you. I'm protecting you, Kevin Version paraphrasing, then God allowed Balaam's eyes to be open, and he looks before him, and there's an angel of the Lord with a flaming sword. The, the dumb animal, the dumb donkey could see what the, the prophet of God couldn't see. He allowed, he allowed the donkey to speak repentance to the prophet. Sometimes God uses dumb donkeys to speak repentance, to speak telling men to repent of their sins and trust in Jesus. God used the stupid animal to turn and speak to his master. God will use the lowly, unlikeliest things to bring his glory. Therefore, he will rise up uh, uh, someone from obscurity, someone with a speaking problem, someone self-conscious, self-righteous, full of pride and religion. Rise them up, clean them, and set them in the middle of a studio to preach the gospel, to tell people to repent of their sins and trust in Jesus. God uses dumb donkeys still. So preacher, prophet, Sunday school teacher, youth pastor, God used a dumb donkey. He loosed his tongue, and the, the dumb donkey spoke repentance. Why? Why aren't you speaking repentance? Many people are on their way to hell. They're sprinting towards hell. Like Charles Spurgeon says, they're sprinting towards hell, but we should set our ministries, our churches, our, our, our places of worship outside the very gates of hell, that they will have to leap over us and plow through us, tackle through us to get to hell. Let us do so in our hearts and our ministries to preach the gospel outside the gates of hell, not down the street, not down the Golden Boulevard, a word, the nice part of town towns go to where the disheartened the wicked the evil are and preach the gospel preach the so in such a way that people are either offended by what you preach or, or they're in love with what you preach to talk about affections of heaven and how jesus saved wicked despicable train wrecks of people wretched people who deserve hell this is the gospel that we preach here that jesus died for sinners because of christ he, he people like me get to go to heaven because of jesus people who deserve hell in spite of us in spite of our own hearts despite of our own wicked idol factory hearts like john calvin says people like me get to go to heaven or my rap sheet in heaven as long as my arm but jesus's blood washed away my sins future, past, and present. I am not once saved, always saved. I once saved, fully saved, like it says in Hebrews 7, 25. I'm rest assured in the arms of grace that I won't lose my salvation like I lose my wallet. I can rest in the arms of grace and trust in Jesus as he reaches in with the gospel, changes my heart, changes my affections. Notice, I can't go to heaven as a carnal Christian. There'll be nothing in heaven that grabs my attention. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be happy in heaven. I'll be poor because there wouldn't be the, the joys of this life in heaven. There won't be strip joints. There won't be liquor joints. There won't be nip joints. There won't be pornography. There won't be, my idols won't be in heaven. None of those things that I worship will be in heaven. But for the true Christian, the true Christian, he, he will go to heaven not for the streets of gold, not because family members are there, not because there's a beautiful mansion or, or the 70 degree weather. He wouldn't go to heaven for the, the, the chicken at the marriage supper of the lamb. He, he would go to heaven because Christ is there. For the Christian, his affection is for Jesus. For the donkey who's tied up in life, his glory is for God's glory. Your purpose in life is to bring God glory, to give him praise, to make his name known, to make him famous through all the nations. Now look in verse 20. As Jesus, has, he's already entered into Jerusalem. O Zion has seen his praises and worship. Now Jesus is there. But notice the story starts to change. There's a, there's a turning point in the gospel. And there's a point that's been turned here. Uh, notice from all the way from Genesis to now. It's always been about the Jewish people. Jesus came to his people, but they rejected him. The, the believers, the, the political leaders, the people of authority, the religious rejected Jesus. But notice, 
Notice who comes searching for Jesus. Notice who, who's interested in this young carpenter. Notice who wants to talk to this Jesus. Verse 20 in, in John chapter 12. And now among those who went to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Now, many people have wondered, are these, are these proselytes, or, or are they proselytes, or are they, are they uh, from the dispersion? Are they Jewish people that were just Greeks who were out dispersed upon the earth? But no, if they were Jewish people who were just Greek in, 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 in birth, they would be called Hellenistic. But these people were people who heard about Jesus. They come up to the festivals, they come to the Passover, and they heard about this Jesus. But they were Greek. They weren't Hebrew. They weren't the people who, who were sent to, 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 tell, to tell the laws and the statutes and the, the Ten Commandments who were given the laws of God. These were people outside the nation of Israel who have come because they heard about Jesus. And notice they come to Philip. Now Philip possibly was the person they came to because of the region of the area he was born and he had a Greek name. They come to Philip and they speak to Philip and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. Now the Greek are always those that are searching for knowledge and understanding. Now, they might have got the knowledge of Christ and they, they understand who Jesus is, but just hearing about him wasn't enough. They wish to see Jesus. They wish to commune with Jesus, to talk with Jesus, to have understanding and speak with him. No, if this tangible man, they wanted to touch and feel heaven and see him physically. They wanted to speak. It's not enough to just hear about Jesus. They wanted to see Jesus. Now, when Philip, he went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And notice what Jesus' response was, that these, that these Greeks wanted to see Jesus. He said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the other, it, it, it dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life, loves it, loses it. And whoever hates his life and this world will keep, will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must also follow me. And where I am, my servant will be there also. If anyone serves me and the Father, the Father will honor him. These Greeks were seeking out Jesus. Notice the becking call, the effectual call, as Jesus calls out to his, the, just hearing about Jesus. Maybe you're tuning into the boneyard. You're wondering what this show is all about. Why, why this guy keeps talking about Jesus? It's an effectual call. You, you say, I want to see about this Jesus. I want to investigate. Open your Bibles. Start reading in John. Start reading the Old Testament about a prophecy that someone's, someone's coming to restore humanity. We read about the fall in Genesis, how Adam and Eve sinned. Notice God didn't come in a fireball and consume them. He didn't come in rage and anger. He comes walking, walking in the garden, calling their name. Adam, Eve, where are you? Where are you? God knowing fully where, where Adam was, he was able to see through the trees and through the bushes where Adam was shaking, quivering, afraid, afraid of God and his wrath. But God comes gently, beckoning Adam, where are you? He was speaking a rhetorical question to Adam. Adam, where are you? Where are you now? Why are you hiding? He's not saying where you physically are standing or where you're sitting. Where are you, Adam? Where, are we still where we used to be? Are we still connected spiritually? And he comes beckoning Adam, calling out to Adam, just like Jesus stepped down out of eternity. He stepped down out of the ivory towers of heaven to find and save sinners. He leaves the 99 righteous to find the wicked on the side of the mountain tangled up in the thorn. He, he finds those that are the evil, wretched, and wicked for his glory. Why? Why would God find an addict or a liar, a thief or a murderer, a molester, an evil, wicked person, a, a, a wicked person who serves idols, who provokes God to wrath? Why, why, why would God save someone like that for his glory? Sola de gloria. Sola de gloria. It's Latin and it means God's glory. God gets glory alone. He gets alone. Now we can, when we get to heaven, we can't boast. We can't say, it's by my own merit. It's by my own works. It's on my own last name, my denomination, my political party. It's by place, my place in life or my race. It's because of my, 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 my position in culture. It's not any of those reasons. We boast only in Christ. Maybe you're like the Greeks today. You'll say, sir, I would see Jesus. Well, let me 
Let me make you thirsty for the gospel. Let me make you give you uh, salty oats to make you want to soak up the water of the gospel. This Jesus proved he's God by turning the water into wine. He proved that he was the Lord of all, he, of all living life. He fed the 5,000. He proved that he can multiply. He, 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 he heals the man of Bethesda to prove that he's Lord of time and space. He, he's the Lord of, of, of life and living, of living and the dead as he raises Lazarus from the dead. He, he heals the blind man. He causes the poor to, to, to leave. He, he proves that he's God by his works and his claims. He claimed to be God. So investigate. And forget, investigate who this man is, who Jesus claimed to be. Is he really God? Is he Lord of all or not of all? Is he Lord or a liar? Is he, is he schizophrenic? Is he crazy? Is he, is he wild? Is, is historically facts true about who this Jesus is? Read outside of Scripture. Read Josephus. Read about the Cicero. Read these people who tell us historically who Jesus is and then read what the Bible says as we have 521 eyewitnesses claim who Jesus is. So repent of your sins and trust in Jesus. Repent of your sins and trust in Jesus. He is the only way, the only way to get to heaven. The whole concept of the Bible sticks was a God-given idea. To give them any kind of device uh, that would encourage them to get into the Scripture, to listen to the Scripture, I support it. Since faith comes by hearing developed the military Bible stick, tens of thousands of servicemen and women have had access to an audio Bible, no matter where they were deployed. To understand what the Word of God says brings them great comfort. I believe it gives them great strength as well. Act now. Help provide our soldiers military Bible sticks. For one soldier, give $25, or two soldiers, $50. And to provide military Bible sticks for four soldiers, give $100. Everyone told me that having an abortion was easy and I could get on with my life, but I can't stop thinking about what I did. I feel so ashamed and I wonder if even God will forgive me. I know it's a sin, but maybe it won't matter. Will it? She hopes it won't, but it will. Even one sin puts a wall between us and God. If we die with that wall there, it's there forever. Receive God's forgiveness and be sure of where you will spend eternity. Let us help you begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. Call 1-800-NEED-HIM. You're watching WHFL TV 43 in Goldsboro, North Carolina.
Tucked away in the sounds of northeastern North Carolina, in Curry Tuck County, you'll find Knott's Island. That's where Bob and I went this week to visit the island and to talk with a very special person that was born and raised there, Mr. Roy White. There are two ways to get to Knott's Island. One is by ferry, coming from Curry Tuck. Bob and I took that route. About a 45 to 50 minute trip. Now, before you take the ferry, be sure to check with the ferry division and make sure you have the right schedule. The other way is to come in from the north from Virginia on a two-lane highway. When you get to the island, you'll find a lot of small farms. There's also a small wine industry on the island and a wonderful wildlife preserve. Along the road, you'll see many beautiful sites, including the historic Knott's Island United Methodist Church.